A mountain range stretching 4,800 kilometers stands where no mountains should exist. Scientists once called these the Orphan Mountains of North America, baffled by how they rose so far from any crashing plates. The official story leaves out one crucial tectonic twist, hidden deep beneath the continent. Why did the Rockies defy all geological rules? The answer changes our understanding of how continents are born, if you know where to look. A spine of stone runs nearly 5,000 kilometers across the continent, slicing through forests, prairies, and desert basins. The Rocky Mountains tower over the land, yet their crests lie hundreds and even a thousand kilometers from the nearest crashing waves or trembling fault lines of the Pacific. Early explorers charted their jagged silhouette, but the deeper puzzle was geographic. How could such an immense range rise so far from the edge of a continent? By the late 19th century, geologists had traced their sweep from New Mexico to the Yukon, measuring not just height, but the sheer breadth of uplift across the western interior. The Rockies did not fit the pattern seen in the Andes or the Alps, where mountains grow close to tectonic collisions. Instead, these peaks stood as anomalies, what scientists of the time began to call the Orphan Mountains. The crust beneath them showed signs of powerful horizontal compression, yet the nearest active plate boundary lay far to the west. Each survey, each hand-drawn map, deepened the riddle. The Rockies' position defied every established rule of mountain building. For generations, the question lingered. What force could have lifted a mountain chain so vast and so misplaced? The answer, it turned out, would lie hidden far below the surface in a story written deep within the Earth. Beneath the western edge of North America, a hidden engine churned for millions of years. Around 90 million years ago, the Farallon Plate, a vast sheet of oceanic crust, began to slide beneath the continent. Unlike the steep plunge seen along most subduction zones, this plate followed an unusually shallow path. Instead of diving deep and quickly, it crept forward at a low angle, squeezing itself between the continental crust and the mantle below. Geologists call this rare geometry flat slab subduction. The consequences were profound. As the Farallon plate advanced, it did not simply vanish at the edge of the continent. Its shallow course drove compressive forces hundreds of kilometers inland, far beyond the reach of normal subduction zones. The continent's interior, once a stable expanse of ancient rock, began to feel the distant pressure. The crust thickened and buckled, absorbing the relentless stress transmitted by the flat-lying slab. Evidence for this hidden collision comes from seismic imaging deep below the surface. Remnants of the Farallon plate still linger, preserved as high-velocity slabs in the mantle beneath central North America. These fossil traces, along with patterns in ancient volcanic rocks and the sudden inland shutoff of magmatism, reveal how the flat slab forced the continent to deform from within. No other mountain chain on the continent rises so far from the edge, and no other tectonic process channels such force so deep into the interior. The Rockies are the visible legacy of this invisible, continent-spanning collision. Between 80 and 55 million years ago, the continent's crust bent and broke under extraordinary pressure. This was the Laramide orogeny, a term geologists use for the main mountain building phase of the Rockies. Instead of a single sweeping uplift, 
the land fractured into a mosaic of blocks, each bounded by deep, basement-rooted faults. These faults sliced through rock that was already ancient when dinosaurs roamed, forcing slabs of crystalline granite and gneiss upward through stacks of younger sediments. In places like Colorado's Front Range, Wyoming's Wind River and Bighorn Uplifts, and the Black Hills, the result is stark, billion-year-old granite cores jutting high above the plains, flanked by tilted layers of once horizontal sandstone and shale. The evidence is written in the rock itself. Steep hogbacks, abrupt unconformities, and conglomerates in nearby basins recording torrents of debris shed from rising peaks. Thermochronology, which measures the cooling history of minerals, reveals a rapid exhumation story. Rocks that had simmered deep underground for eons cooled quickly as they were thrust toward the surface. Their mineral clocks reset between 80 and 55 million years ago. Each mountain block tells a slightly different story. Some rose in pulses, others more steadily, but all bear the imprint of this slow, relentless collision. The Rockies did not rise as a single wall, but as a patchwork block by block, fault by fault, across a span of nearly 25 million years. What began as deep compression now stood revealed at the surface, a jagged backbone ready to be sculpted by wind, water, and time. Rain and rivers began their slow conquest as soon as the peaks broke the surface. For the next 50 million years, water and wind carved the raw backbone of the Rockies into sharp ridges, plunging canyons, and sprawling basins. Torrents of debris poured off the rising blocks, filling the lowlands with thick blankets of gravel, sand, and mud. In places, these basin fills reach several kilometers deep layer upon layer of sediment, recording each pulse of uplift and every ancient flood. Geologists read these strata like a diary, tracing the relentless stripping of mountaintops and the birth of broad intermontane valleys. But the land was not only shaped by erosion. Deep beneath the surface, the tectonic regime was changing. As the Farallon Plate fragmented and segments began to sink more steeply, the crust west of the Rockies stretched and thinned. This shift from squeezing to pulling opened the door to a new kind of violence, volcanism and extension. Faults tore the land apart, dropping great blocks to form the patchwork of basins and ranges that now stretch from Nevada to western Utah. Volcanic fields flared to life, pouring out lava and ash across the evolving landscape. The Basin and Range Province was born, a vast region where the continent seems to ripple and crack a living record of the forces that once compressed, then stretched, the American West. The Rockies, meanwhile, stood as witnesses to these changes. Their high crests and deep valleys, sculpted by both water and fire, preserve the memory of a continent in motion, shaped by the endless interplay of uplift, erosion, and tectonic reorganization. Today, the Rocky Mountains remain a living, restless backbone. Precise GPS and satellite radar interferometry track the movement of the land itself, revealing that certain peaks and plateaus still rise at rates of one to three millimeters per year. These numbers might seem small, but over centuries and millennia, they add up to measurable change. The crust beneath the Rockies is not frozen in time. Instead, it flexes and breathes, responding to forces rooted deep within the earth. Some uplift is driven by the slow rebound of rock 
as glaciers melt away, but much of it reflects a more mysterious, ongoing adjustment of the continent's interior. Beneath the surface, seismic waves travel at different speeds through the mantle, painting a picture of what lies hidden below. Tomography scans reveal the ghostly outlines of ancient slabs, remnants of the Farallon Plate still embedded deep beneath North America. These fossil slabs are denser and colder than the surrounding mantle, and their presence continues to affect how the land above moves and deforms. In some regions, geothermal springs and unexpected earthquake clusters hint at lingering heat and stress, evidence that the tectonic story is far from finished. Despite these advances, major questions remain. Why do some stretches of the Rockies continue to rise while others stand still? How exactly do these deep mantle fragments interact with the crust above? Even with the best tools of modern geodesy and seismology, the full mechanics of this ongoing uplift elude simple explanation. The Rockies are not relics. They are the continent still in motion, shaped by forces that began nearly 200 million years ago and have yet to fully settle. Beneath every Rocky Mountain peak, Earth's engine still moves. GPS stations confirm the Rockies rise millimeter by millimeter, year by year. Their origins are ancient, but the forces shaping them are anything but finished. A reminder that even the oldest landscapes remain works in progress. Thanks for watching.